Hey guys, welcome to this video and my channel. My name is Heather. I'm the owner and creator here at Wicked Whiskey Designs. And today it is all about the steampunk. Look at that. Ah, this came out so pretty, so crazy, so much fun. Super easy to do. Um, used a multitude of techniques, a couple that I'd never even tried before. And now I absolutely love. And I'm going to show you how to make this exact tumbler and all the fun things that went into it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is a relatively new channel, but I have a ton of content on its way. So you definitely want to get notified of when those videos drop. And don't forget to hang out to the end where I have a tips and tricks section. Um, it's basically all of my little tips and tricks that I learned along the way in making this cup so that I can share with you all of the things to do or not do so that your cup comes out perfectly. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the intro. I'm going to go ahead and get started, show you everything you need to make this cup. Let's go have some fun. Hey guys, good morning. Let's get started. What are we doing today? Um, first, let me apologize for the lighting. It is super dark in the garage right now. It is raining. It's been raining all night. It's still raining. You know, my fly traps are really happy. My dogs are. So um, we're going to try to get it as light in this garage as I can so you can see what I'm doing. What are we doing? Um, we are starting with a fully sanded and prepped white spray painted cup. <sighs> Okay, let me just say this. In my head, in my head, the design for this cup works, okay? It's just going to take a lot of little layers to all come together, but it works. But, um, you know, I'm a Gen X kid, and I remember being in school, and, like, they gave you, like, a book to read, and, you know, you would read some, and then, like, it would ask you a question. And how you answered is, if you answered one way, the book went this way, and if you answered a different way, it went this way. That's kind of how we're going to work with this cup. Um... What we're going to do first is add a very light gold layer. And when I say light, I mean more of an ivory, um, but we don't want it flat. So we are going to add a little bit of extra colors in there to, you know, make it a little more exciting. We don't want it flat. We don't want it chunky, but we don't want it flat. So we're going to, you know, work on that. Why aren't we starting with a gold spray painted cup if we're working on gold? I don't want it flaming ass gold, okay? I want it very light. I want it light, but I don't want it too light, but I don't want it too dark, but I don't want it too light. So you can kind of see where I'm going with all of this. The thing is this, the, the what we're putting down here now, the glitter base, is what will make up the gear uh, pattern that goes around as a base for the cup. I don't want it so dark that it's distracting to the rest of the cup. I don't want it too light to where you don't notice it, but I don't want it too dark to where you notice it too much. You know, if you know what I mean. So we're going to get started on that. Um, after that, obviously we're going to, you know, add the glitter. We're going to let it run. We're going to go ahead and epoxy it. Once we are going to epoxy it so it's smooth, once it's ready, we're going to go ahead and lay down a, um, a stencil for the gear pattern. We're going to spray paint it. The spray paint is... Nah, I don't know. It might be white. It might go dark. I don't know. We're going to see how this comes out to begin with, and then we'll move forward. If I do white, then the next layer will be a dark layer. If I start the next, this right after this, if this ends up being dark, then the next layer will be light. So yeah, we're just going to call this the Gen X cup and kind of move forward with it. But I think in the end, it's going to be amazing. Hopefully. I don't know. Let's go see. All right, let's go get started. Apply a very thin layer to your sanded and spray painted cup with a gloved hand and don't forget to blow out your micro bubbles. Next, you're going to go ahead and start adding your glitters. I used Nude from PDB. I used Sand from Tumblr Supply. I used uh, Silver Shimmer from Glitter Gifts and More, which by the way is the most amazing silver and the only one I use. And then I also threw a little bit of Ravenclaw from um, Peachy Olive, just for a little bit of contrast. Um, I don't want this layer flat. I want there to be different nuances of color. I don't want it just to be one flat gold color. I want a little bit of parts that maybe are a little bit darker. I want that little, you know, that dark blue over the Ravenclaw kind of scattered in there. M majority of this layer is going to get covered. 
at least 80% of this layer is going to get covered, but I just don't want it to be a flat glitter color. So sprinkle very lightly. Um, you know, I didn't go for full coverage whatsoever. I sprinkled very lightly with one color, then came in with the second one, again, very lightly, put all the colors in there. And then at the very end, went back with the nude and, you know, lightly sprinkled to kind of blend and fill in any of the negative spaces. Okay, kids. So this right here, can you see this, is the pattern that we are going to put on the base of our cup. Um, my problem is this. This is my little silhouette portrait with a max cut space of 8.5 inches. This is going on a 30 skinny, which is 9.5 inches uh, minimum. So we're going to be about an inch, inch and a half short. Keep in mind, I also have an actual silhouette cutting machine that cuts 12 by 12 and I just don't have it. I don't have it set up. So we're going to kind of, we're going to work through that. Um, PSA, little public service announcement. When your husband says something offhand and you get irritated and said, well, I'm going to show him, pack up your entire office from the shared office upstairs, move it downstairs, move your little self downstairs to your second office. And now this is your entire workspace. Ah! But on principle, this is where I'm staying. Whatever. So that being said, our little silhouette portrait with its 8.5. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all of this out with 631 removable vinyl. As you see here, I also have an additional little segment. We're going to cut that out as well. We're going to put this on the cup and then we are going to daisy chain that at the bottom and, um, and it should fit the 9.5 fine in theory. So we're going to go ahead, cut this out of 631 removable vinyl, and that's where we're at. So let's get started. This, if you can kind of see it, is our, the majority, our, our main, our main, um, our main decal, our largest decal. So I am going to take off this part. Okay. The part that's going around it. Get rid of that. Oh, get off me. Now. I don't know if you can see around most of this there is can you see that maybe focus little camera um there is basically a box a thin box running around this just about with the exception of this side on three sides like a a, a heavy outline we want to keep that heavy outline because that's what's going to keep everything together and make it easier to put on the cup by the way put this the right way so you don't put it backwards um we do not want that box at the very top to run to where it's like, here's the box. We want to overshoot so that when we cut that box off, it doesn't interrupt the pattern at the top of the cup. And I hope that makes sense. So we are going to carefully, carefully, Pull this off. Oh, that's not working. Shit. There we go. Ish. Okay. That actually came out a little bit better than I thought it was going to. So here is our echo skeleton of our decal. Okay. I'm going to try to do this as easily so you can see what I'm talking about without actually doing anything to mess this up. You see here at the top, this is our top, okay? It's going to go like this. And it's got that box, just like there's a box over on this side. There's a little box on this side. We're going to cut all that off. What we don't want to do is start this box at the very top because then when we cut off that, that line, you know, there's going to be a gap between the pattern and the top of the cup. So you want to be mindful of that. If you do that, honestly, it's really not that big a deal. It really isn't. But um, I'm going to attempt to do it without including the line at the top. If that doesn't go well, then we'll know we need to add the line at the top. Be very careful because obviously this is delicate like lace at this point. So you want to, you know, try to avoid getting it hung up on anything. Um, this is not a seamless pattern. So honestly, you don't really have to worry about it being continuous in a perfect way. 
Now you're going to go ahead and slowly start wrapping that decal around your tumbler. This does not need to be perfect. This is not going to stay on the tumbler. This is simply a template that you're going to spray paint around. So if you do get ripples in that decal, don't worry about it. You know, it's one of those things that if this was a perfect seamless pattern, it'd be a different conversation where it all needs to be perfect. But this is a negative space ecosystem decal going down. There's no way that this is going to be perfect. Um, or at least not when I do it. So go ahead and add your decal on your cup. Remember that you have those boxes on three sides of this decal using a sharp uh, craft knife or you know something along those lines. Go ahead and trim those off and then add your second bottom piece if you are like me and have a cutting machine that only cuts up to eight or 8.5 you're going to need that second section line that up as best as you can and add that at the bottom if you have a big girl machine or a big boy machine where it cuts 12 by 12 and you have one seamless pattern you know where you're not having to daisy chain and piece this together then by all means you're just going to go add you know your your one decal to the cup and call it a day then don't forget to trim the top and the bottom of any excess vinyl and you are done once your decal is on your cup you're going to spray paint your cup white i used two thin coats of white spray paint and let it dry once it's fully dried, go ahead and grab a sharp craft knife and you're going to start taking all of that removable vinyl off your cup. Be very mindful that you are working with a cup that is just simply spray painted white. So make sure you are trying to keep your cup as clean as possible. Be sure you're very purposeful with where you are adding your craft knife so that you're not adding a bunch of extra scratches or you know mistakes to that white paint. And once you have all of your 631 removable vinyl off and this does take a minute because there's a lot of moving parts no pun intended once you have all of that off go ahead and send that to epoxy need a heavy coat you are just going to add um, a thin layer of epoxy to seal in your design and the spray paint okay guys mm, do we love it i love it i love it okay so this is you know, sometimes I feel like the Mad Hatter doing some of these videos because there are certain cups that I I do tutorials on that I've done a thousand times. Like it's just, you know, A, B, C, D, E. And then there's cups like this where like, I feel like I'm the Mad Hatter. You know what I mean? I'm like, no idea what the hell I'm doing. I'm like, let's try this, let's do this. Um, you know, let's go find a baby elephant let's name it pineapple and let's put a green hat on it like that's what I feel like I'm doing with some of these cups but I have so much fun doing these kind because I literally I have no idea what the hell I'm doing it's just kind of like let's try this let's try this so in in the spirit of that let's try this okay so I love this this is bootyful um but I do want a little bit of I want a little bit of zhuzh, zhuzh on here, okay? I don't want it to just be very hard lines and, you know, let's just put a sticker on it. We're done. We're, you know, we, we're not doing that. So this is what we're going to do. Um, hold on. Okay. This is going to sound crazy, but I saw it. I, I saw somebody do this and it looked amazing. And I don't know, maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. If, if it doesn't work, then I'm just going to take it all off and you'll never see it and you'll never even know that we did this. So we'll try that. Okay. But what I'm thinking is this. Okay. So we have white and gold, right? So freaking cool looking. And what we're gonna try is this. Hang with me here. I have, um, what is this? Granite, dark granite spray paint and silver metallic. Hold that thought. I also, you know, all the times my husband's like, why do you have so much shit? This is why random perfect color covered in dust and everything else perfect color never used it didn't even know it was here random shit yeah okay go me michael so what we have here we have the dark granite we've got a metallic silver and a very cool peacock blue we are going to put a pretty decent coat of epoxy on that cup while the epoxy is wet we are going to spray paint parts of the cup, just little zh, 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 zh around there. And then we are going to mist it with a little bit of alcohol, like regular alcohol, okay? 
like you would alcohol ink. And in theory, it should kind of do the same thing with the paint that it does with alcohol ink and that it kind of, you know, does that with it all and, and gives it kind of a distressed look. I don't think I'm going to use the granite as much as I do love dark gray because... I haven't picked all my decals out yet. I haven't picked all my images out yet, but I know a lot of them are kind of like on a, have dark gray elements to them. So I don't want to do dark gray on dark gray, but I think that metallic silver and banging peacock blue, whatever the hell color this is, I think this would look really cool and it would complement any of the darker decals. I think that's what we're going to do. That makes sense to me. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to put a, like I said, a pretty decent, you know, layer of epoxy on there so that we're not interrupting the cure process with adding spray paint and alcohol and, you know, different elements to the actual mix um, since it is going on wet epoxy. So we want it to be somewhat of a heavy coat, but we're not trying to drown it either. So we'll kind of, you know, play that part by ear. And then we're going to spray some spray paint and then we're going to zhuzh it with some alcohol. And I think it would come out very kind of like, you know, dreamy, distressed, kind of a good backdrop. So that's what we're going to do. Mad Hatter in action. Mm. Bye. All right, kids. All right. What are we doing? We've got Genesis blue, which is a really pretty peacock blue. We've got metallic rust-oleum, silver, and we have a little squirty squirt of alcohol. Um, fingers crossed, we're gonna give this a try. I feel like I know what I'm doing, but I've never done it in person myself. So um, yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, first with the blue. Now I know this is gonna dissipate a little bit. That's all right. Now, I would normally grab like a big, thick, cheap, 99 cent stiff bristle, bristle brush from wherever. Um, if you think I can find one of those right now, you'd be wrong. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of, I just kind of want to like mush out that paint a little bit. I don't really want any hard edges per se, but it seems to kind of be doing that on its own anyway. So maybe I'm just messing it up messing up its plan. Yeah, maybe I'll stop doing that. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Um, so nervous. All right, now I'm going to add... Oops. Wouldn't that be the shitter? Hmm. Oops, shit. trying to completely cover the blue. I feel like this is going to be one of those things where we have to layer it out. Okay. Now, <gasps> look at that. Ah! Oh, that's cool. Okay, I'm digging it. It kind of stipples out and distresses that silver. I don't really know how much I'm supposed to be putting on here. I feel like that's awesome. I know it doesn't look awesome right now, but I promise you when it's all said and done, it will be awesome. Um, I like that because it is, whoops. Maybe didn't need to go quite that aggressive with that, but all right, well, it is what it is. Let's see here. Yeah. It'd be really helpful to have spray paint that actually wasn't near empty. All right. Yeah, adding that alcohol just kind of dreamies it all out and kind of distresses it a little bit. That's pretty badass. And, you know, 
I did not want, like I said, I didn't want all the harsh lines and the, here's a full pattern. Like I wanted something funky and I believe that's what we're getting here. That's actually really pretty cool. All right. I don't know what's happening right there, but that's all right. We'll fix it. And by fix it, I mean, we'll put a decal over it. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're going to let this spin and then I'm going to, when it's cured, I'm going to go ahead and put a micro, um, micro coat of epoxy over it. And then we can start playing with decals. Super, super happy. A couple little things while I'm thinking about it. Um, I know that if you don't, if you're not in my head and you don't have an idea of how this cup is going to turn out, hopefully, looking at it right now, it's like, what, what are we doing here? I promise. I think it's going to come out really nice. Um, I love doing the paint with the alcohol on the wet epo epoxy. It came out beautiful. A couple of things I will say, like I said, I'm, I'm saying this now while I'm thinking about it so I don't forget later on. Number one, um, less is more. Keep in mind, you are you know, you're rolling wet epoxy. So your paint, your, you know, distressed portion is going to roll and expand a bit. So keep that in mind, less and more, less is more. Number two, make sure you have paint in your spray paint can before you begin so that you can have smooth application versus, you know, burst of, of spray paint because it's at the very bottom. I, I wouldn't expect anything different for myself, to be honest with you. Um, and then also I did go through and I let it roll a little bit and then I kind of got a little bit, um, a little bit like curious or a little bit concerned or, you know, I've got to always touch stuff. I really honestly do. So I went through with a paper towel, a lot of my gold, like 99% of my gold glitter was, you know, faded out with the spray paint. So with a, with a paper towel and a gloved hand, I kind of went through and just took little little zhuzhes here, like a little bit here and a little bit there. And then I took my torch and just literally, you know, psh, 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 and kind of smoothed out the edges there. Um, that is probably the only thing I would suggest doing. Like I said, less is more. If you do find you put too much on there, you can take just a little bit off, just kind of smooth out those edges and, you know, to where you're happy. But like I said, I think it's coming out great. I'm excited for the next layer. So I guess that I'm gonna let this roll. I'm gonna go ahead and put a micro thin layer of epoxy once it's cured, because I don't really know how it's gonna cure. I don't know if it's gonna cure wet, if it's gonna cure tacky, or if it's gonna cure perfectly. Obviously we're adding spray paint and alcohol and you know, all that. So um, I'm gonna add a micro coat of epoxy when it's done to make sure everything is fully sealed. And then we're gonna move on to the next layer. Okay, so I have, I went, when I tell you that I had no less than 18 steampunk clip art bundles in my little Etsy cart, that is not an exaggeration. So I've got it narrowed down. Um, I think this is where we're going with things. Um, I already know I'm probably gonna have to recut something, resize something, because I never size anything out the right, you know, right the first time. So we're gonna go ahead and, I don't know if you wanna watch this part or not, but I guess we're going to do that anyway. I'm in my silhouette. I'm gonna click on my little registration marks. I'm gonna say okay, because we are going to do printable vinyl for these. Um, you can see my little marks. I'm trying to drag everything in. Maybe bring you over a little bit. I always size everything out so big. Let's see, let's just kind of calm things down a little bit. I like that thing though, I want that thing to stay big. I also don't want everything like the same size either. I know you're gonna be missing. All right, hold the phone here, let's see. Let's come back over before I forget and raise that little bottom part there right about there and um I have another sheet don't I I do let's I always make everything so freaking big and then I get like three things on a cup um let's see here 
I'm trying to keep everything in the, so nothing's going over past any of these marks because these are the registration marks that are going to um, guide the my silhouette to be, come back and actually cut all this out. So let's see here. That should be fine. We should be fine. Guess this little thing's going to go on the other page. Pop that over there. Okay. Yeah, I think this will all fit. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I have my first um, sheet loaded into my silhouette. What's going to happen is these little um, markers here is what is going to guide the machine so it knows you know, where it's supposed to start cutting. This is what we are cutting. And I'm going to come over here. Well, we're gonna start here. We're gonna go ahead and hit send and see if it'll automatically frame everything out and it seems to be doing that very well so we don't even have to do anything extra okay so we are going to now my silhouette as i've said before has a mind of its own so i know that i need to do this on 5 13 and hit send and there it goes once your decals are cut, hit them with some spray sealer and let them dry before using them. Now comes the fun part. I just basically started laying stuff down. Um, you know, it's one of those things that there's no instructional on how to design or lay down the decals on a cup like this. You're just going to kind of follow your heart. You're going to know what works for you. I started, um, you know, I didn't want all of the pinks on one side and all the blues on one side. I wanted things layered to where, you know, you had some of the larger, more elaborate decals layered on top of some of the gear decals. So it wasn't just like things randomly stuck in a line. Um, the gold metallic gears, I absolutely love. I thought that really was um, something fun to add because that way it gives it a little bit of shine and pop. Whereas this cup doesn't really have any glitter other than the main base. And much to my chagrin all of that time and trouble you know and thought that went into that base 98 percent of it is covered once you do the um the wet paint aesthetic and then also start laying around layering on all of these decals like you literally can't even see that base except for in a few spots and i'm okay with that but i'm still not okay with that um definitely just have fun with this you're just going to layer things out you're going to follow your heart and just you know design this out the the way that makes you the happiest when you are happy with how it looks, go ahead and forward that over for its coat of epoxy to seal all those beautiful decals in. So I mixed up my epoxy and I added a little bit of diamond dust to it so that all of my decals will have a little bit of sparkle since there's not very much glitter showing on this cup. I went ahead and added probably about 30 mLs to this cup. And you will probably have to add another second thin layer um, to this just to make sure that all of your decals are fully sealed in. And don't be afraid to um, sand this down in between each layer as long as you're not going to be doing anything to damage the decals. Hit it with your torch to blow out all of the micro bubbles and you are done with this amazingly beautiful steampunk tumbler. Hey guys, what's up? Ah, look at all of that. Oh, so much steampunk goodness. And pink and teal. Or light blue. Bluey teal. Bluey teal. How are you guys? I am good. Okay, so let's talk about this cup. I had no idea what I was doing. You know how I have to, you know how some of these cups go. Um, I've got cups where, you know, I've done a million times and I could be like, well, we're gonna do X, Y, Z and A, B, C, and these are all the steps and you know, beginning and end. And then you have cups like this where it's just kind of like, I don't know what we're doing. Let's see what happens. Um, I feel like some of like the bigger project cups, the you know, this is pretty much how they go. You know, I kind of start with like a vague general, you know hazy idea 
and then we just go have some fun with it. And I think everyone needs cups like that where you're just like, you know, let's just throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. And that's kind of what we did with this. So a lot of fun. Um, excited to try some new techniques with that. Um, you know, the, I guess we should just start in the beginning. Yes. You know how these little segments go. <sighs> okay. So you know what? Drink. Mm. Sorry, but it's early morning. Okay. So we started off with our layer, um, you know, of the glitter and the gear pattern. Um, I love that layer. I'm sad that we, I spent a whole lot of time and effort on that and you don't even really see it. So we'll kind of cover that part a little bit, but that was fun. Um, I feel like that's a wonderful backer, like a wonderful base. If you're going to do um, a cup that has a lot of, you know, movement to it, a lot of, you know, the thing with cups like this, and I'm always, get, I get so nervous when doing cups like this because I'm like, I don't want it to look like, you know, I just put a sticker on a cup. And, hmm, you know what I mean? So like, I always feel like I need to go, there needs to be so much more to it. So it's not just like a sticker on a cup. Not that there's anything wrong with a sticker on a cup, but you know what I'm saying. So um, I really did love that base. Um, you know, when you're wrapping a pattern on your base like that, definitely take your time. Removable vinyl in this case is definitely your friend. And just kind of, um, you know, the, the, the good thing or the bad thing with this is that this was not a seamless pattern. So it's a little more complicated. It's not like you can just be like and be done with it. You know, you kind of have to play with that a little bit. But I also knew that there was going to be so much going on that nobody would really notice that it wasn't a seamless pattern. It had so much activity and so much movement to that design that, and I knew that we were going to be doing all sorts of stuff on top of it that I, I really wasn't worried about that. But again, when wrapping any kind of, you know, tumbler in that respect, just take your time, just go slow. And if you mess up, take it off and put it on again. Um, okay, so like the next part, of course, was the adding the spray paint to wet epoxy. That's fun. That's fun. Everyone should go do that. Um, definitely little things to keep in mind. Make sure there's actual paint in your spray paint can. That makes things a little bit easier. Um, you know, because I was kind of like getting a little mad because it was coming out like, in, you, know, <laughs> you know, these huge bursts. And I was like, stop it. But um, that's my bad as per usual. Um, so definitely make sure you have paint in your spray paint can. Um, less is more. You know, you have to remember too, in doing that method, you are still working with a very movable organic animal, okay? You're spraying your spray paint on your wet epoxy. You gotta keep in mind, even if you're using fast set like I do, your epoxy is still moving. You know, you're still gonna have movement there. So whereas if you start laying it down and you're like, oh, that's perfect. I don't want any more coverage than that. As it moves, you're running into the, you know, the, the possibility that it is gonna move more. And mine did. And I was fine with it because it looked beautiful. But it covered up my pretty pattern for the most part. But whatever um definitely less is more definitely a lot of fun to do you know the only thing too that i was thinking about you know i added the blue on the bottom and the silver on the top because that's what i want i didn't want it you know this came out so so cool like you can see both colors and that's where i wanted that the only other thing i was thinking about that may or may not have made any kind of a difference um and if it would it probably wouldn't have been dramatic or significant but maybe the little uh, spray bottle that I had for my alcohol is very, um, very small misty. You know what I mean? It's a very misty, uh, very reminiscent of like hairspray, you know, hairspray um, cans back in the day. For those of us who are Gen X and used Aquanet, think that. But <laughs> if you also in that era, in that era and you remember like, uh, what, oh God, what was that hairspray? I don't remember what it, but it had a different kind of spray nozzle and it came out much more, less mist, more spray. So I'm kind of thinking that if I had a spray bottle that had a little bit more of a spray versus a mist, you would have bigger drops of alcohol hitting your cup and that that might make more of a, like a little bit of more of a dramatic pattern with that. Um, kind of like if you're doing alcohol ink and like you missed and then like but if you were to take like a paintbrush and just kind of like hit it and you'd have like drops you know what I mean like there's a different aesthetic to each so something to think about I, I just kind of thought about that 
but definitely recommend that that um, that technique. It's a lot of fun. There are so many possibilities. Oh my word, you could do so much with that. You could do a mate like galaxy cups. Galaxy cups would look amazing with that kind. Of, mm, that would be fun. Let's do that. Maybe we'll do that. Okay, so um, that's where we are with that. Now, when it comes to your decals, let's talk about decals for a minute. I love printable vinyl. I love water, I mean, water slides. You know, I feel like there's a time and place for each, and I feel like there's a cup, you know, depending on the cup and the style you're you're working with is how you wanna go with it. I didn't wanna use watercolors on this cup for two reasons. Number one, you know, I knew that I was putting a lot on here, and I knew that I had no pattern. This wasn't something like where it's gonna be like, this is a set pattern. And so I know exactly where everything's going, what we're doing, you know, it, that's not this cup. And I knew I was going to be layering things. That's not going to work for a water slide unless I'm putting on like half of my decals, adding epoxy, and then when it's cured, coming back and adding more. And you could certainly do that. That just wasn't what I wanted to do. That's not where I was with this. Plus water uh, slides. If you're printing them on white vinyl, now we're talking about if you are one of those goddesses that can like cut your water slide decals on your Cricut or your silhouette. God bless you because I haven't yet to figure that part out. But that being said, I also knew I had gears and things with lots of tiny little negative spaces. Uh, I wasn't going to try to figure out what I was doing with that in regards to water slides. If I'm doing clear water slides, obviously I have to put some kind of a backer so that they show up. If I am doing um, clear water slides and I'm spray painting the back white, now we're talking negative space. If I'm using white water slide paper, again, back with the negative space situation and essentially the layering, you know, scenario. I wasn't doing all that. So um, <clears throat> printable vinyl is the way to go for this. I love printable vinyl. I use it a lot. Like when I get um, customer orders and they're like, hey, can you put my decal, my company decal or my XYZ? Yes, I definitely can. Because they are strong images. They're strong. They're, they're, um, there's nothing delicate about this. You're not like, where's the image? No, these are vibrant and strong and they have a presence and you know they're there. And that's exactly what I wanted for this. And like I said, with the layering, you're just layering, you know what I mean? Like you don't have to worry so much. If I had... <clears throat> Um, the inclination to do so, and I thought about doing this, but I also didn't want this cup to be like 500 pounds. You know, part of me, I do love laying things down, doing another coat of epoxy, and then layering on top. I do love that because you can notice that difference in space there. Um, but again, I also knew that we had two runs of epoxy to cover the initial base of glitter that no one's going to see. Um, we had you know, um, a po we had a pretty strong layer of epoxy so that we could have movement with doing the, um, the wet spray paint on top of it. We had another layer to seal that. Like I knew that like we're getting, I mean, it's not a home security weapon yet, but it's, 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 we're going to be getting there pretty soon. So I didn't want to do that extra layer of epoxy. I am a fan of doing that though. Um, but I just didn't do that with this one. The decals, the decals are fun. Oh my word. Let me tell you, I I am not even exaggerating when I tell you that I had like 20 steampunk bundle clip art kits in my little Etsy cart. I think I was up to like something like $800 just because then I started rabbit holing and they had like goth steampunk and then they had crazy little cute like Halloween guys. It, it, it just rabbit holed from there. If you are looking for steampunk and you like steampunk designs and you want to give this a go, any and every color you want is there. Any you want pastels, they have it. You want white, which was banging. You want a white steampunk theme, go for it. They've got, you know, your traditional, you know, bronze and, you know, whatnot. They've got purple. They have purple, okay? So, you know, I was going through and I was like, I knew I wanted something pink. And when I originally started doing this cup, it wasn't, it was more kind of like that nude, um, um, like that light gold color and like maybe some gray and some pink. That's where it started. And then it went to that evolution. So, you know, like I said, with, with your printable vinyl, let's get back to printable vinyl. With your printable vinyl, um, I do love it because it is. It's very strong. It's a strong image and you're not going to go wrong with that. 
you can cut it on your um, on your cutting machine, which makes things a lot easier. And I did show that in the video, um, you know, whether or not that helped or not, I didn't know, but I wanted to throw it in there just in case. And um, it's definitely something, the hounds of hell are barking. That's Bailey. Obviously the Amazon man is coming to attack the house as per usual on a daily basis. Just regard the barking dog. Um, but yeah, printable vinyl is definitely a way to go. Um, and then I just kind of went through and started layering out, you know, as far as placement, like I didn't have a plan, you know, so just kind of start with like your main favorite image, lay it down and then just start going. And the good thing with printable vinyl is this, you, especially make sure that you seal it with your, um, with your clear sealer, let that dry. It protects it because it's not indestructible, but it's definitely, it's, it's definitely, um, you can definitely play with it a little bit. I had ones on here where I laid it down, I pulled the decal back up, laid it down, put something else on top of it, pulled that up, pulled the other one up. Um, you know, you can only do that so many times, but at the same time, there is um, a level of flexibility there. So, you know, just kind of start laying your decals down, start with the main one that you liked best. For me, it was this one. I love that one. And then just kind of start, you know, placing things out. I mean, I am a fan of like starting here and then putting one here and putting one here. And then fill, start filling in the gaps. You do you. If you want to just like start and just start rolling all the way around, you do that. But, you know, it's just how I go. And um, the gold metallic vinyl, I just kind of thought that would be a nice little accent. So it wouldn't just all be, you know, the same tone. I really kind of like that very, very much. And then I just kind of started playing with it. Um, I have a tendency to cut decals really, really big always so I had to kind of readjust and and I think one of these like like that one right there like that was like the offshoot of like a, a real big decal and I was like I need something to put right there it's blue we'll just cut that off and put that there so you know you can do that um again this was just a really fun cup take your time with it um again you know I start these cups and I have no clue where they're going I didn't even have this one like on the list you know the magical list of of um tutorials we have you know to be doing on this channel here it just kind of i started in one direction and the next thing you know i was doing steampunk for the week so okay i hope you guys had fun with this i really did too one more thing i wanted to add okay so i have had so many people ask me where i get my thing like you know what my favorite this is what my favorite that is where i get my glitter shelves where did i get them so i went ahead and I opened, I started a little store on my YouTube channel. You know, the alternative was starting a store on my actual Wicked Whiskey Designs website. And I just didn't feel like doing that. Um, it wasn't the fit I was going for. And the only other alternative is that was like waiting until this channel got like big. Like if this channel grew big, I could go and join like the Amazon's influencer program. Well, that's not where we're at by any means. We're a little baby channel right now. So what I did is if you look at our, if you look at my main YouTube channel page, not like a video page, but if you go and hit Wicked Whiskey Designs in the main page, there's all these little, uh, you know, a third of the way down, you have all these little tabs, um, you know, videos, shorts, playlists, and then there's a, a little tab that says community. What I've started doing is the products that people ask me about a lot that I get through Amazon. I basically made that little community tab my Amazon store. So if you're interested in where I've gotten my glitter shelves, you know, you want the link to that or you want to, you know, the link for this or the link for that. That's where that's going to be. Um, anything I get through Amazon, basically. And I, then I was like, well, I don't want to just be this, you know, my glitter racks like i have other stuff that you know i've talked to people about so kind of like my favorite products that i use like my almost like my everyday products like that i get through amazon are going to be on that tab so you know check them out um and then as this goes forward obviously you know the links for everything i use is going to be on the this individual video but if there's something in there that i also think would be good in the fake amazon store and it's through Amazon, then I'll go ahead and throw it over there in the community tab as well. So just a heads up, it's something I did this week. Um, like I said, probably my number one request of, for information is where I've gotten these, these shelves. So, 
because they took me forever to find. So I'm happy to share them because, you know, finding the right glitter shelves are not easy. So these work. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Um, you know, take your time with it. Have fun with it. Explore your creativity with this one because this, this isn't one that, you know, it's very structured and, you know, you put a line here and you tape it on. No, this is just go buck wild with it. So have a lot of fun with it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm still working on trying to get two videos up a week. I think I might actually be able to do that this week, but we'll try. Um, anyway, I hope you have fun. Have a great week. Bye.